In this video, I'm going to show step-by-step -step how to use NI AWR Design Environment to lay out a printed circuit board, PCB, um, and generate and export the Gerber and drill files to have the board made by a board house. And the board house I chose for this example is OSH Park or Osh Park. It's a very nice, um, or they have a very nice two-layer prototype service. Um, which costs five dollars per square inch and uh, after you send them your files they will ship in about 10 to 12 days which is pretty good and what I really like is you get three copies of the board here is the two layer stack up we see it's like a sandwich right the outer layers are solder resist go in and you have one ounce copper and then the bulk of the sandwich is the core which is um, an FR4 substrate with a dielectric constant of 4.6 and published on their website are the design submission guidelines um, there's various design rules I'm not going to go into any of that because what I'm interested here is just the Gerber file so when it's all said and done, what you need to do is send Oshpark, you upload a zip, zip folder. And in this folder are a bunch of files. And these files um, tell Oshpark how you want the board to be laid out. And these are Gerber files. Now at Oshpark, each of these Gerber files um, should have various extensions in the file names like GTL, GBL, GTS, and XLN. These extensions tell Oshpark what layer this file corresponds to. So the top layer, which is the top copper layer that you're going to, I'll show you how to lay out in um, an IAWR design environment. When we generate that Gerber file, we're going to need to make sure that its extension is GTL. And the same thing with these other layers. So here is a new, fresh, untitled project. Um, all I did was open up NIAWR Design Environment. So I'm going to save. Let's go File, Save Project As, and I'm going to save it in my uh, D drive. I have a special folder for that, AWR Projects, and I'm just going to call this, oh, I don't know, Gerber Test, for lack of a better file name, Gerber Test. Okay. What do we do now? Now what we want to do is go here on the left and you see circuit schematics. Right click and hit new schematic and let's name it something. So I'll just call this um, Aaron schematic. Okay, so I started my schematic. The next thing you want to do <clears throat> is go up to, let's see here, options, project options and you can go to global units and here you can change if you want to work with metric or inches mills you can change your the basic unit so i'm going to stick with millimeters and hit ok next thing you might want to do would be go to options layout options here you can control the grid spacing so in this video we're going to just manually draw in our um, our board and so we're going to need a grid, right? If that helps when you're drawing, when you're laying out the uh, shapes for the different layers. I'm just going to choose a grid spacing of 0.5 randomly, I guess. Um, then you want to go layout font. And we're going to be putting some text in our silk screen layers and we want to be able to see the text so we want the text to be reasonably large so I'm going to choose the height to be uh, 0.8 millimeters and you can even choose the font name and make sure to this thing is highlighted draw as polygons and then you can hit OK OK then I'm going to kind of double click on this make sure it's highlighted and now here in the project tree, I'm going to go down, you see a layout. I'm going to click on layout, and here is this layer setup file. It's called default. I'm going to double click on this. And this file allows you to um, set up various properties for your layout. So here 
and under the general folder is this thing that says drawing layer 2D. Okay, that's fine. Now there's a bunch of layers that are already defined and I'm just going to create uh, my own layers. I could use their names, but it would just get too confusing for me. I guess I might keep via. Anyways, what we're gonna do is hit new layer and it just created layer one. I'm gonna bring that all the way up to the top so I can see it. And I'm gonna put, I'll call this FCU for, and that means um, copper on the front of the board or like the top layer of the board, copper. So FCU is what I'm just gonna call it. You can call it whatever you want, just remember what it means. New layer, I'm gonna say BCU, so the bottom layer, copper. New layer. F mask, so the mask on the front of the board, front layer of the board, or the top layer of the board. New layer B mask. These masks are solder masks, uh, is what they refer to. And then I'll have a board outline. New layer, what else do we need? Um, silk, so F silk, silk screen on the front of the board. New layer back silk, or B S I L K silk on the back and then I'll actually just use um, their word via you don't actually need to but I just will so I'll bring that up so they're all kind of grouped together so these are the drawing layers that I'm going to use and everything else looks good actually now you need to um, define how you fill these layers when we draw them okay so this takes some time so I'm going to fill maybe these dots and I usually put my copper layer on the front side to be green it's my own little um, tradition to do that. The bottom layer I usually put is kind of red or something. The mask, um, I'll make it kind of a funnier pattern and I'll make it blue for the front mask. The back mask, I'll make the same pattern and I'll just leave it black, I guess. The board outline, I'll make randomly choose these dots and whoops these dots and I'll make it a uh, light kind of sea blue thing. Silk layer, I'll make it uh, dark gray and I'll just fill it with a, yeah, maybe just solid fill and back will be a solid fill and I'll make it, I don't know, this color. Via, let's make it maybe this checkered pattern that looks fine. Okay, so all of this looks good. Let me just hit OK, kind of save it. Let's go back inside that same file in our layer setup. And go here at the bottom, you see File Export Mappings. Right click and hit New Gerber File Export Mapping. And I'm going to go down here and hit Uncheck All. Now we're going to export our Gerber files and we need to tell um, the software what files we want to export. And we're going to export all the layers that I just created. Now, you don't actually have to choose via, so I'm not going to choose via. Basically, when we create vias, vias are um, connections between the top layer and the bottom. Um, this will be exported via drill file, so I'm not going to check this, though if you did, it wouldn't actually matter. So feel free to check it or don't to make it simple. And let's hit OK. Okay, the next step is to, I think we're ready to actually lay out the board, draw the board. So I'm gonna hit project down here in this project tree. I'm gonna go, let's see, make sure that the schematic I want is highlighted. We only have one schematic, so that's not a big deal. Go up here to view, view layout. And this is our, think of like Microsoft Paint. We're gonna paint, manually lay out our, uh, our circuit, layer by layer. Okay, so to do this, go down to layout in the project tree, this little tab down here, and select the layer that you want to draw. So I'm gonna do this top. So FCU, remember, is the copper layer on the front side of the board, or the top of the board. Once you've selected or kind of highlighted, then you go to draw, and all, you, can, you have all these different options and I'm not gonna get into right now but uh, rectangle is the most simple one. So I'm gonna hit rectangle and you can kind of manually draw this like I am here. So 
you know, you can lay it out like that. Um, I'm going to right click and hit delete. Um, a nice thing you can do is if you go draw rectangle, you can hit the space bar and start the rectangle at some point, some grid. So or at point zero zero, I'm going to do right now. So I'm gonna hit OK. And it kind of anchors the rectangle at that point. Then if you want to hit spacebar again, you can actually tell the software the size of the rectangle. So let's say I want it to be, I don't know, 10 millimeters in the X direction and I'll make it negative three millimeters in the Y direction. And there, it created our rectangle. Okay, so what this is, is you're looking at how you want the copper to be, let's say, drawn on top of the board. So if we sent the Gerber file just as it is, it would just be a nice rectangle and nowhere else on the front of the board would have copper and everywhere where this rectangle is would be copper. So, I don't know, this is kind of boring. Let me make one more just fun, fun shape to it. Let's do, um, I don't know, just this shape. Okay. Now you can also go view, where is it? View all to kind of see the whole board if you get lost. Now I'm going to click on back copper, BCU. And I'm going to still use the rectangle uh, tool. And wherever I draw this is going to, you know, going to have copper on the back. So many of these microstrip boards, um, the back is just filled with copper. So I'll just do the same thing here. Boom. Okay. So I've drawn my copper layer on the front and on the back. Let's do the mask. Now this one's a little bit tricky. <laughs> this is a, like a negative layer. So let me try to explain. Um, and I think it depends on the board house, but for Osh Park, like if I draw a rectangle, it says forward front mask, and I send this file in. This, what Osh Park's gonna, how Osh Park interprets this file is, it's going to put solder mask everywhere on the board, on the front of the board, except in this rectangle. So in that case, it's like a negative layer, but it interprets the copper layers the opposite, it says whenever there's on um, this polygon, this filled polygon, it interprets that as that's where you want the copper to be. It's not, it's a positive layer. But again, for the mask, it's saying this is where you don't want solder mask. So if you didn't want any solder mask at all, you would have to make this size or this, uh, this shape, the size of the total board. If you just wanted no mask at all on the top of the board. Um, in many cases, that's might be what you want, like maybe for an antenna or something. But I'll just, just for fun, I'll make it just like a sliver, like that. Okay, B mask is the same thing. It's saying, it's specifying where you don't want the solder mask on the bottom of the board. So I'll make kind of here, let's see, control C, control V. I'll make two little slivers for absolutely no reason. I'm just kind of playing around the shapes. Um, let's see. Okay, so here's the board outline. I'm going to talk about that last. Let's go to silk. Silk is the silk screen. So you can actually put in, um, you know, text if you want. So I just went to draw text and I'll just say, hello world. Now the thing about silk screen is it has to exist on, um, where there's solder masks. So I cannot put this, yeah, in the program it'll let you put hello world, but since there's this um, front solder mask sort of keep out zone, the solder mask, excuse me, the, um, the silk layer won't work. Bottom line is this, these words that you put on the silk screen layer need to be on solder mask. I don't know if that made sense, hopefully it did. And then there's B silk, that's silk layer on the bottom. And I'll just make some text. Actually, instead of text, I'll make a little shape. Draw, um, I'll make a little, couple of rectangles. Show you how that will work. Okay, let's go down to Via. Now Via 
what you want to do is draw with a circle. And if you put your via over copper, like I am right there, Oshpark is going to interpret this, this via, as a plated via, which means it's going to electrically connect the top of this via, whatever copper is surrounding the top of this via, to the bottom. If you place a via out here where there is no copper on both sides, actually there is copper on both sides, there's, or there's copper on one side, but um, so this wouldn't work. If you place a via somewhere out here where there's really no copper on either side, it's gonna not, it's not gonna plate that via. It's just gonna drill a hole. Um, so I'll just put another via hole right there. So what I'm gonna do is um, expand the board out a little bit because Oshpark has a minimum board size and I just wanna make sure I hit that board size. So this is kind of a work of art, right? So we just kind of do with what we think it needs to look like. I don't know, let's make this bigger. Just whatever makes sense. Okay. The final thing you want to do for your layout is to draw the um, board outline. So Oshpark has a nice um, write-up on the board outline. Basically, the board outline is a thick closed line that's drawn around the circumference or the perimeter of the board and um, the fab interprets it as follows. The fab will route so that the edge of the board is at the center of this line no matter how wide the line is. So that's good to know. Okay so how do we do this? What you do is you go to layout actually no options layout options find this paths tab and make sure your path width is something small, like 0.1 or 0.2 millimeters, something like that. Hit OK. Go to Draw um, Path. And let's start our path around the board. So I'll start here, maybe around, around. Now I can go here if I want. Can kind of make almost any shape you want to make. Um, let's go up here. There, that looks good. I'm going to save it. All right, so I think we're ready to generate and export our Gerber files. So I did forget one. It's not really a crucial step, but go here to Default, File Export Mappings, and you can rename your Gerber export map to anything you want that we created. So I'm a, I rename mine Aaron Gerber Export Map. Um, though you could leave it as the default name, but um, might make things simpler just to rename it. Then we go to, okay, we're ready. Tools, actually scripts, layout, export PCB, drill Gerber. Make sure that the output drill files is your vias, metric, the correct layout schematic is um, selected. Choose your export directory and then select the Gerber export mapping file, which is the one that we created our custom file. Everything looks good and then hit OK. And then it should all work. It says Gerber export is complete. So now let's go find our Gerber files that we just generated and mine are right here in this folder and view by type in this folder we can see that there are, there's a drill file and a bunch of Gerber files and these log files I don't need these log files so I'm just going to manually dump those delete and these are perfectly fine Gerber files in fact we can view them in a Gerber viewer here's Gerb V file open layers let's find it All right, and we see that the Gerber file, the Gerber files are look valid. Um, it looks nice, just like what we expect in our Gerber viewer. Okay, let's close the Gerber viewer and go back to the Oshpark website. Now, the Oshpark website says that um, the extensions need to be specified um, very carefully so that the 
that Oshpark knows what file corresponds to what layer. So the top layer needs to have the extension GTL, the bottom layer GBL, and so on. So let's manually do this. Um, drill needs to have the extension XLN. BCU, that's the bottom copper layer, that needs to have GBL. B mask, that's the bottom solder mask layer, that needs to have the extension GBS. Board outline, this needs to have the extension GKO. Silk, on the bottom layer needs to have the extension GBO, bottom silk screen. FCU, that's the copper front, copper top layer GTL. F mask, solder mask on the top layer, GTS. F silk, silk screen on the top layer. GTO. Okay, now I'm back on Oshpark's website. I'm going to click on Get Started Now. And now it says to select a file on your computer to upload. So, what we need to do finally is to zip this up. So, send to compressed zip folder, call it test, doesn't really matter. And I am going to, if this will work, drag test into this bar and it says your upload is processing. And here we see a nice image of the board and it looks pretty good actually. It looks exactly like what we expect it to look like. Um, let's hit continue see how far we can get. So here's the board top, here's the board bottom. So we, we see with the board top we have this metal strip here with this little stub and the two via holes and then this region without solder mask. That's exactly what we drew here. Here's the region without solder mask and the copper on the top. Uh, let's go down the board bottom, you can see that you have this big copper pour and then these two little regions without solder mask, so the copper is showing through, and then these two little um, silkscreen little images of squares. And that's what we have here, exactly. Of course it's flipped, so it looks, it's a flipped image because they're like kind of showing how the board would look upside down. The drill holes, the top layer, this is just the copper, the image of the copper, that looks good without the solder masters, the board outline, top silk screen, that looks good, bottom silk screen, these little images, you could draw a happy face if you want, the bottom layer, just one big old piece of copper, bottom solder mask, so again, this is like the negative layer, this is where you don't want solder masks, so the copper showing through. Top solder mask layer, again, this is where you don't want solder mask. The image of no solder mask, so everywhere else would have solder mask except there. So you see the copper shining through. And then you can order your brand new board. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of it.